Hello, hello. This is Johannes Watery from Hold to Run. Today, I want to recap monetization of banner ads into an application. Now, there are two ways for the uh, developer to monetize their application. Either you implement ads and make the application free, as I have done, or you make it premium, where in some phase of the life cycle the user has to purchase or subscript with a payment. So, in this short intro, I want to pinpoint two key items. One is the first is correct implementation of the banner ad so that it's bearable, non intrusive. So let's destroy this application. When the user opens the application, he will see loading animation and a nice little animation of the UI elements closing the gap right next to the banner ad. So we take all the uh, available screen space for the UI elements. That is nice. The second is that we actually want to uh, choose within our application who will supply the ads. This is called mediation. You can do this directly in Google AdMob ads platform or you can take more freedom as a developer and implement multiple ad providers also within your code. As in here, we have created selector. So you can do this locally by hard coding your ad providers, or if you want to be more like Tesla, you can configure it via online from back end. And in here, we are using Google's remote configuring from Firebase. And we can actually inject new values into the end client mobile devices. And if we decide so, we stop showing Google AdMob ads and instead we will start directly showing Facebook meta ads or Unity ads, etc. So let's make a demonstration for this one. I'm just going to hard code new selector keyword in here which is unity we do have to now restart the application so let's reload okay our app is restarting again nice loading animation and now we should see unity ad in a second and again repeat that nice little animation where we close the gaps there and take all the available screen space. These two functions I will recap today. So if you like to code, you can repeat possibly something similar that I have done or take your own angle. But before we start, let's make a tour of what I do. This short intro I made with ServerDoc application, which you can see running with cyclic tests. You can use this for your own API backend testing. You can leave it running as an endless service, send files, receive files, send JSON objects. And if there's any errors, it's gonna give you a alarm notification. So you know how to react. So if you like what I do, go directly into my homepage, holdtorun.com. In here, you can see short intros of the applications that I have released or go directly into Google Play Store and test my applications here. Good, let's start. Okay, now let's start recapping how we implemented this nice little animation to close up the gaps when the banner ad exists which we can call non-intrusive 
implementation for ads and at the same time we are able to define within our code the actual ad platform if it's gonna be one or many that we want to use see as in our fragment now we're using unity ad and within our main activity we're using google admob ad okay so in our composable banner object which is actually this view object will be this view object in here we have to have a selector defining what ad provider we want to use so i'm receiving this value from firebase google firebase remote config backend so during the startup of the app we are always receiving latest values from the back end as a string value which is pretty much saying unity meta or add mob and that's our selector you can do this any other way you feel good but this is how i operate with that selector value we can select the view type to be instantiated so it's AdMob Unity Meta or then it has to be AdMob as a default. These are just ready to be instantiated view objects. Still null because they don't exist. Okay. Then we have to define some measurements for the uh, banner because the view can be uh, in landscape mode or in portrait mode like so so we're detecting the actual screen height and width we're detecting the orientation we're giving default banner height if the view doesn't yet have any height and uh, from our custom function we're receiving a dp value of height to give the banner ad the uh, initial screen space where it will be displaced without it causing a sudden pop-up and forced uh, transfer of those UI objects and destroy the uh, user experience which is not something that we want with our ad so with this we pretty much return default height or actual view height from the view if the view actually exists good let's go back to our composable banner ad so now we have the uh, initial max height that that we will reserve for the banner with that we will create our first mutable state of value which can be later on changed with the callbacks of the uh, ad it, when it tells us hey i'm loaded then we can actually return the actual height for the uh, about to happen animation or if it failed we're just gonna use the default banner height which we have in here to close the gap to the uh, 50 dps okay and with that target height which we can manipulate later on we're just gonna give a animatable animate dps state and with this it's beautiful that uh, the compose it's pretty much gonna do all the hard for hard work for us uh, uh, for the animation okay so now we want to see some loading dots and uh, animate the uh, animate the background like so so first dots then the uh, a small animation so we have our first composable which is here add loading animation so it's always gonna exist behind underneath this banner ad because the banner ad is gonna be uh, resting on top of it as an android view in here where we're gonna jump in here after this one so let's open the ad loading animation 
So in here we have the value if the add is loaded or not and then in here we have the animated height. Okay. So if the add is not yet loaded we're just gonna keep on showing the flashing dots. Okay. And we, we're gonna animate its height. Good. If it is loaded we will hide the dots and just so a, a transparent box, which is just an object to keep a certain height. It will be also animated with our animate dps value. Okay, good. So it's either one. That's just gonna what is gonna make the dots disappear and leave a transparent box when the ad is loaded with a unloaded or failed to load callbacks, as you can see. In here, when we get the callback from the add, we're gonna just give the uh, mutable state target height new value from the actual view height. So now we can hit to the correct uh, a spot with the actual view height, or we default if it fails to load to the uh, 50 dBs. We, if we pass in the 50 dB, then it's just gonna close leave a gap of 50 dp. That is just good default for banner size ads. Okay. Now we can start working with the uh, actual banner ad view. Now this is pretty complex because we have to uh, code our custom object to hold all three ad platform ad view suppliers and implement all the callbacks within this object and abstract our own override functions for the uh, callbacks that we actually need. And with this app manager uh, we can then insert the uh, view types that can exist and the actual selector which is gonna tell what exactly we will return with this object as a view and as it can be any view it's going to return as a view group which in the last step can be defined as a specific view type. We're just gonna ask are you Google Ad View or are you Unity Ad View or are you Facebook Ad View and then we're gonna smart cast it to that view type and return our own view as an instance of it. And Compose is gonna display that specific view with its all uh, uh, callbacks within and we're gonna magically see that banner ad. Wow, that is complex. So let's dive into our custom ad provider class. So now it's time to dive into our custom ads provider. So this is the, uh, the class that makes it possible for us to define what ad provider we shall use. As you can see Unity on the fragment and AdMob, Google AdMob in our main activity. So we have to use this as an object to be able to override our abstracted callback, override callback functions from any of the uh, ad providers. So let's go in here. These are, I have just written our own abstracted callback, override callback functions on loaded, which we will surely use. There was the three. We also will use on the uh, upper level class fail to load and I will use the uh, add opened as so add opened, fail to load and loaded. Those are three main that I need, you may need more. So I have just uh, coded all of those um, callbacks as an abstraction because the Google, Unity and Meta will use more or less of these as a callback. So
So now this select add view is the function that uh, we now will use to define the uh, what add view will be uh, returned. So once we have now instantiated our custom ads provider, it is open class with open uh, override functions. We can now add our callback functions in here and define what will happen when any of the ad providers trigger these functions. And uh, but most importantly, we will now ask back the actual view by our selector. So we pass in the ad types that we know can exist at mop unity meta and the selector which tells which one of these will be returned as an ad view. In here we have the uh, ad view types identified and the selector and again we will use when function to detect with the selector what ad will be returned. Okay, selector is telling us add view, add mob add view. So let's open this function, set up add mob. Okay, we passed in the view. Now there is two possibilities. It is still null. It hasn't been, uh, uh, it doesn't yet exist. It's not instantiated or it is already an actual Google add mob view. So the first check before we return this view with as an object with all the callbacks, we check are you still null with the Elvis operator. If you are not null, then we're just gonna return that same view as a view because it already has all the functions built within. So that way we don't reload the view afterwards it has been successfully instantiated as so it just comes back as the same view good if it's not yet instantiated then we have to create the google ad view for the first time so this is the uh, from the google ad view sdk for that view we will apply an a bunch of functions as an object within this ad view so we will give it with the view has to be given the ad unit ID. You have to know a little bit about how Google Ads SDK works. And uh, we will have to give it a listener. The view has to have a listener for the callbacks. So the listener will be instantiated as an object because now we can implement all the callbacks for the Google to tell us what is happening with the uh, ad loading. And uh, whenever these are loaded, any of these happen, we will just trigger our own abstraction of the callbacks. But now any of the view supplier, ad suppliers can trigger these and we have a standardized function at the level of the composition in here. So now we have abstracted it successfully to be used for any ad supplier. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. When Google Ad has loaded successfully, it's we're gonna trigger our, our own abstraction on the on ad loaded. I am using though I am using handler to delay this at least for a half a second because I've noted that if I instantly call my on add loaded, it's just going to return height of zero. So the view, for some reason, Google view takes a little time. So I delayed it for half a second. That's okay. Then I can get the height from that view. It just seems to take a little time for the view to exist actually. So we're going to call our own abstraction of callbacks for impressions, failed to load, add opened, clicked, 
and I want add closed. Good. Now we have the object for our listener within this view and then we can also implement the load add. So it's gonna load itself and then Google can reload it and reload it when it needs to. That's the good within the uh, Google Ad Mob. It has cycled reloads. We just need to load it once. Then it works. Okay. Then we have the other option. It can be Unity. Now we know because the selector tells us the value Unity. So let's set up Unity. It's pretty straightforward, the same. Just a little less of callbacks to be uh, implemented for the uh, listener. So we do the same. If the view already was instantiated, it, it is not null. Let's just return the same view into our application. So it doesn't reload itself again and again from zero, but just uses the same view object. So it exists already when we came in here. And if it's null, then we will instantiate the Unity view add view type and apply this uh, listener functions as an object. In here, it's a little bit different than in Google AdMob. You have to directly within the uh, banner view, you have to pass in your Unity placement ID and the, uh, the size with an exact measurements whereas Google can be uh, adaptive banner size or exact banner size. Okay, so, but this is pretty similar. We have to again implement the listener for, for the callbacks for, from Unity ads and it has on banner loaded. We handle this exactly the same as it was with the Google ad mob. Just delay our abstraction of on ad loaded callback for half a second. Then it has a callback for clicks, fail to load, and banner left application. And I noted that this is ad opened within the Google ad, so I'm gonna call my own abstraction of on ad opened. So now we have it. And then again within the view, we're just gonna make it real load itself for the, for the first time and then it can handle itself for reloading and reloading when it's need to uh, refresh. Good, now we have two ad platforms implemented within our application. Then for the third one was Facebook Meta. And through the selector, we know that we want to return view type of Meta. So we do the same. As you can see, these are pretty much, we can almost repeat them again and again. So return the meta view if it exists. If it, not, if it doesn't yet exist, then we create the view type for meta and apply the callbacks as an object. And in here, the listener, just has to be created through a variable. It cannot be returned to the uh, view directly. And we have pretty much the same uh, callbacks as the Unity had. And uh, in here, again, a little uh, 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 modification has to be done because I on, on add click was the only one telling if the view can be op was opened or not. So I'm just gonna call on my own abstraction of clicked and add opened. So I can use any of them as my own add opened function. And with the add listener, we're just gonna make it load for the first time. So this view loads itself as the two other ones also loaded themselves. Now we have the three possible add platform uh, implementations in our custom ad provider. And this can return any of those as a view group. View group can handle any view type. That's what I noted, noted during this process. So then we go back into our compose 
and we have that view group with all the uh, object callback functions and as I showed earlier we can finish this just by asking from the view type which are you Google add view type or are you Unity add view type or are you Facebook add view type and we're just gonna smart cast that add view into our view objects and return that as a view to be displayed in here. And that was the magic behind to implement your own mediation for ads. Okay, so all we have to do now is to observe our abstracted callback functions for the on add loaded, fail to load, or add opened. And any of the uh, view providers, ad providers, set up within our ads provider, we're able to call these functions for me. So let's take a look when we get a successful on add loaded callback from Google. So loading, animating. Okay. And we delay this callback from all of the ad providers for a half a second to make sure that the view exists and we get a DP height of the actual view instead of zero. With that, we are now able to update our mutable state value of the target height, which will make our graphical object uh, refresh itself. And as it was used also in as a animated DP as state, the composable, this value will animate itself within our animating dots. So, and of course, when the ad was loaded, we will also update the uh, mutable state value of banner at loaded value. So that will ensure that this will get refreshed. And when we start animating our dots in this composable, we get the add loaded value as a true value instead of false. So when this goes to true, we stop animating the dots and in, instead just show transparent box with a certain height of the animated height. And it'll ensure that we also close the gap by animating like so. Okay. And that works for any of the uh, ad providers through this onloaded abstraction. And then we can observe what happens when we click the ad. So when I click this ad or any of the ad, ad providers ad view, all of them will call me this abstraction of the ad open. So these were my abstractions, which are cross connected to all of the uh, ad views in here. Google, Unity and uh, Meta. Okay. So with this, I'm just gonna totally hide the ad view for the user. So I'm not encouraging, I'm not encouraging anyone to click these ads for none, but if some decides to uh, click it, I'm, I'll be a nice guy and I'll just totally close the view for the session. So the fragment will still have its view, but all of them will still comply the same set of functions as so. So now they are hidden and prevents any uh, massive clicking uh, uh, will willingly or accidentally. Okay. And the last to observe is to go through the failed to load. There are two possible situation to get this call back at failed to load is <clears throat> if we already have the view add view on, on its place and for any reason during the refresh we don't have internet or the ad loading fails this gets called and pretty much it does nothing because we already have the targeted height uh, on the uh, 
uh, view height and uh, we don't we're gonna pass in the, uh, the default value but in our function we did the comparison if the view wasn't null we just anyways use the view height so this cannot override the existing height and uh, we already have the uh, mutable state value of loaded true so this can get called as many times as possible but the other situation is that we don't yet have the view loaded and to begin with we don't have internet connection to get these callbacks from the ad provider and in those situations what will happen when we destroy the activity we just get the animation for the height to set it to the default height of 50 dp and that's it so the last question why did I go so far to implement my custom mediation within the application for multiple ad platforms when some can say that hey you can do the uh, mediation directly within with Google ad mobs and uh, set up your mediation partners and Google takes care of this within their ad scope for supplying ads from multiple sources that is actually what I'm doing with AdMob and I can decide within Google AdMob ads to use the mediation with Meta and Unity or any other party or with just Google AdMob ads but here's the catch for some reason Google's algorithms can and will someday challenge your ad traffic to being invalid for any reason it just might be that uh, the ad clicks or ad impressions that your application is producing is something that Google doesn't like it comes from countries and there's the traffic seems invalid in so many reasons that their algorithms think that you're cheating and then they will cut off the uh, ad supplies for your application and you will lose your monetization through that platform in those extreme situation with this kind of a setup built in into your application you can partner up with rest of the uh, ad platforms directly and then remotely you will just refresh your new values from whatever backend integration I'm just doing it through Google Firebase remote config and being like Tesla we can change the modes of the uh, software to work in a different a little bit in a different way so this is nice to have and uh, when you are a developer doing hard work for your application putting the effort in you want to make sure that uh, there's something in for you too so that's why I went through to implement quite a complex ad mediation solution within the application for multiple ad platforms and uh, the uh, if you want to get familiar and try to reproduce this with your own methods or with similar methods that I showed this is possible to do with these dependencies here so I was using the uh, the Google's services for the ads then I was using directly the Meta Facebook's SDKs and uh, the Google's mediation for Facebook to get the uh, uh, ad adapters working through uh, AdMob and then I was using the uh, Google's AdMob mediation SDK for Unity for Unity it seems that the, uh, the native Unity S ad platform implementation is working directly with this Google setup of Unity mediation so I, was, I didn't need to implement the actual .aar files which Unity offers as a standalone SDK package for their ad platform. 
Okay guys, that's all I wanted to show and uh, if you like what I do, you can go directly into uh, Google Play and check out Hold to Run as a developer or my application, especially the Serverdog API testing application. Or go into holdtorun.com to check out my homepage and see short intros of the applications in here. We'll be back.